Oh, yeah. So this goes way back to like, you know, elementary school. I was one of those kids, you know, like flipping stuff and always, always getting into something. So it was like, for me, it was just something I just kind of did. So like me and my buddy had this company, well, like company. <laughs> we had this, <laughs> in elementary we had this school. company in fifth grade. It was, it was doing about mm, six figures a month, but <laughs> no, no, no. So, so we, uh, we would make these tie dye pencils out of like this goo stuff. And then we would actually, the way that we kind of brought it to market in our grade was we would actually like pretty much etch it someone's name into it and give it to them on their birthday to, mm. cr- you know, to generate demand. So oh that, my gosh. so that when like people thought they're like, dang, that's so cool. How can I get one of those? And so then, so then we had to just like, kind of keep making them and selling them. So then that was like a thing. And then like the teachers all shut it down, which wasn't cool, but, <laughs> but no, I like, <laughs> it, I just been doing it. Like, I don't know. It's just one of those things where like, I would be sitting there and like, oh, I think there's money in that. Uh, Emok and Amok is on. What? Emok and Amok is on. Who? Tell your friends, tell your dog, tell your mom. Tell what? Emok and Amok is on. Oh, hey mom. Emark and Amark is on. And we're back with another episode of Emark and Amark. We are back in the Sheraton Hotel in our bedroom. We upgraded from the basement now back to the hotel we're room. Back to 30 the floors up. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> 30 <laughs> floors up. And on the show today, we have Reese Queen, who is founder of Brand Yak. Right Reese, here. thank you so much for being on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So we're going to dive right in. I'm going to let Emar kick it off with some of his hard-hitting questions. Oh, these are going to be hard Christians. Uh, Christians. Hard Christians? Ooh. <laughs> we got some hard Christians Ooh, hard, in the house. We got hard Christians in the house. So let's first uh, begin uh, starting off right. So what's your security number? Uh, it's uh, uh, 315. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You played along there. All right, Reese, uh, you, my good sir, are an interesting creature. Um, we met you here at the... Uh, Digital Agency uh, Expo uh, Conference here in New York. Um, you are a young dude doing big things. Um, tell the tell the audience a little bit, like what your business is and what you do. Okay, yeah. So my company, like Mark said, is Brandyak, and what we do is we take Shopify sites only. So we're married to Shopify, and we do the branding. We do, we go in, and then we also do the development, and then we do the CRO. So it's like a three step thing. And then from there, we try to get their conversion rates up and we partner with the ad agency to go ahead and like really make it happen all the way through the analytics and such. Yeah. um, So if uh, what type of business owners um, would want to work with you, what type of businesses would be ideal to call you and be like, yo, I heard your podcast. I'm struggling. I need your help. What type of businesses should be doing that? We work with a ton of small partnerships. So it's like if you're working with Joey from down the street and uh, and you guys are trying to put this together and it's not really happening or it is sort of happening. You're at like 5K a month or anywhere between there, like in like 20 range, like in revenue, we can help because we kind of can get to know who that audience is because we base everything we do on the audience. Hmm. That's like what is behind the brand. And so we identify that and then that's how we go in and actually create something. So um, we don't really work with customers as much that are like just getting started. I think that you can do it without agencies like us. And so that's kind of where we're at is like you're you're on the verge of having something big, but you need a little bit of help to get it there. Yeah, absolutely. So what's the uh, one, two, three step process of how you help somebody? So if I were to call you today and be like, Reese, I want to work with you. What's the first thing you're going to try to do to help me down to the third step or fourth step or however many steps it takes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We'll take a look at your audience, who you're already selling to. That's like the that's like I said, the very first thing. And then we actually re we rebrand the whole company of what of what your front facing brand is typically. Mm-hmm. Um, like Shopify, the reason that we're we're so obsessed with Shopify is because it's so easy, right? But typically, if you're in this place where you're not seeing these really great results, you might be using a completely out of box theme. You might have bought a logo on Fiverr. You might have just been doing this kind of bootstrap, mm-hmm. and so you would be at this point where like we need a better brand so that's that's the first step is like rebranding to to you know fit the customer unpack that a little bit why is that important i mean you went straight into we're going to meet with you but then we're going to rebrand your company it sounds more than more times than not that you go into that rebrand what makes that so important well it's it's a competition thing in my Mm. opinion so so what we see with the data that we get back is when we can identify a company that's, that's like a Shopify brand that, that looks better, feels better, and actually has content and like visual content that's communicated to that customer. 
it makes for a better conversion rate and happier customers. And it's, it's a way to take a brand from, from just, like I said, the out of box theme to, to doing something bigger. Um, mm. so I, I hope that to kind of answer your question. It, like, it, it does. I mean, what what do you say to if you're working with smaller businesses sometimes? What do you say to the the potential client that says, you know, Reese, I hear what you're saying, but my daughter designed our logo, <laughs> and I really like it. It feels really on brand to me. It's just really cool. I like and, it. So and, we're gonna keep that. Reese. And, and by the way, Reese, she took a design class, so right. um, she's the expert. <laughs> yeah, she's in high school. She's, yeah. and she's really good at this. All her friends say she's gonna be rich someday doing this. Her home, her home ec teacher, man, she thinks she's yeah. just like on the ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So wh- what do you say to him? You say, yeah, that's cool. All right, we'll use that. We'll use that crappy logo. No, we don't. So we won't actually work with customers like that typically, um, and not to be like, oh, we're all exclusive, but. If somebody doesn't actually want to change what they got, then it's just going to be a tough partnership. Mm-hmm. So if if they want to go to the next level and they're like, we know it's okay, and like we 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 invested what we could, but we want to take it to the next level. That that's who we want to work with because honestly, it's going to be hard to change other things. We're not just changing the logo. We're gonna we're gonna change like even some of their products at some points, like what they roll out, and we kind of work with strategy on that. So um, it's got to be something where they trust us to know that we've launched enough companies, and, and we have launched um, right about a hundred right now. Between, Congratulations. between my freelance clients. I mean, and a lot of them weren't very big either. So it's not like, I mean, now we kind of set what we're doing, but um, we're seeing that much data come back and say, this didn't work. This didn't work at all. This is working amazing. That's how we can kind of like shape that. So it's like, it's kind of like what Gary said, you know, this weekend was like, you don't want to go on TikTok or whatever, then right. it's an opportunity that might pass. So yeah, that's kind of what we say too, typically. Do you, I have to imagine as you were getting started, you, you weren't as selective as you were now. You probably just took anybody that came on. If <laughs> yeah. I came on and said my daughter to my logo, you're like, fuck yeah, that's fine. We'll <laughs> yeah. use that logo. Great logo. I love it. Do you have any horror stories or things that just went wrong that you're like, damn, I wish I would have known this before I took on this client? Well, I, I, I could go on for the whole, the whole time. But <laughs> right, give us, give us give the, one. the okay. first one that comes to okay, mind. Okay, I got I to tell you. So the first time I built a website, I thought that probably the most that someone would pay would be $300. 300 dollars No, $300. $300. I, I was like, well, that's probably like the most, right? Because they're like free to kind of build with Shopify. Sure, and all sure, this. So sure. like, that's what I was doing, man. So that was when I when I started freelancing. It was all, it was just like $300 clients. And what you give for that is insane because they don't there's no scope there really. There's like, we're going to build the website. Like there's nothing. And so I spent so much time just like doing the development myself. I learned mm. liquid just to build like, um, kind of customize some things. So, so I dealt with customers that like they would call like every hour, like, no, no, you got to change this, got to change it. And then it, it, it was like, it was a huge waste. So of by money. the end of it, you're making like $2 an hour <laughs> or less or less. I actually lost a lot of money at the beginning. Yeah. As a freelancer. Absolutely. <laughs> like, no, 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 I get that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so what was the biggest lesson you learned from that experience moving forward? You know, it's just to, to have a better like productized service. Mm-hmm. Like I've kind of explained like the three step th- process. It's, it's all about expectation, right? So if we tell the client, yeah, it's going to take this long, you're going to have this many revisions to, to this certain look of branding or, or whatever. So it's, it's, it's communicating that and saying, this is what it's going to be. And if you don't want to work with us, you don't have to, you know, it's, it's just, it's a, you know, it's a free market. You can, I'm sure you can find someone to make it for 300, but, but that's not us anymore. So that's, that's what we kind of took away from that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And Reese, how long have you been doing this? So, so I was doing it kind of on the side for like five years. So five years. Wow. Because, so I got into this cause I used to do Amazon, right? So like back in 2015, you could throw up, you know, anything on Amazon and get it, you know, get it from Alibaba and, and put it up, on, uh, put it up there. And then you would, you would sell stuff. And sure. I, w- I was doing like junior year of high school. I was doing like about 20 K a month selling these bracelets. And so then, um, I got kicked off. Like it didn't work out for me. Like it, it cause I was like so young. I didn't really know how to like do the customer service and stuff. Yeah. But so, by the way, for the audience that's listening and not watching Reese is at the old, old age of 21 years old doing this. So if you didn't pick up on that, <laughs> thought we should uh, drop that in real quick. Sorry. Go ahead. He's yeah. a very old entrepreneur. Very old. On- he got to <laughs> start a little his, late. Yeah. yeah. Seasoned is what they call it. Seasoned <laughs> entrepreneur. Absolutely. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So when I, when I saw that and I saw what kind of a commodity Amazon is and Amazon's it's great. It's killer. It's like going to take over the world. But, but when at that point, about 2015, 2016, I was looking at like, wow, if brands are going to get ahead, they actually have to become a brand. And you guys, I'm going to say brand like a thousand times. You have to like 
Leave it out in this. Uh, <laughs> love, that's, is that your password? <laughs> yeah. Brand, 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 brand. But, 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 so. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so that's actually where I was like, how can customers do this better than Amazon? And that, that even like in 2016 was Shopify. And so I started kind of opening stores and, and doing that kind of one off of Amazon where you're able to really get intimate with the customer and, and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that, so 2016, so that's. Yeah, I guess that's not quite five years, but yeah, yeah close yeah. enough. Yeah, give or take. Yeah. So, um, w- would you consider yourself an entrepreneur, or are you just somebody who's just trying to do something and you don't like that label of entrepreneur? No, I'm. I, w- I would consider myself an entrepreneur. Yeah. So right now we don't. I don't have any full time employees, mm-hmm. right? But we do have a whole team of of contractors, right. and some of them full time. Yeah. Um, I would say like probably six of them are at forty hours a week, depending on how many projects we have. So, so I feel like I, I take that role of like managing other people, which is if you're not doing that, I feel like it's tough to call yourself, you know, an entrepreneur if you're not, mm-hmm. if you don't actually have like responsibility in things that come along with like, you're just kind of like thinking about things. Um, yeah. And, and I, and I really, I really want to make an impact as far as like, I want to launch a few D to C brands of like what we're working with, um, in the next few years. Like that's, that's really where we're looking is like we're seeing good results. And so we want to actually start to get our own and we've already, we're already actually working on one this year that'll be out probably this time next year. Yeah. What, 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 what's the goal uh, for the, you have a goal for the next two years, 10 years, five years, whatever Is yeah. your business goals and metrics you've set in place to reach. Yeah. So we have like some more short term actual numbers we want to hit mm-hmm. with brand Yak. Right. But as far as after that, like what, what the company will be, I really want to go more the holding route and actually build up assets inside the company rather than mm-hmm. being a client facing business the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's going to take us to a whole nother level because then when we can prove our own, our own work within ourselves, I think that then we're just going to be working with the best companies because, Hey, we can prove that we did it. Like we're launching the next Allbirds. We're launching the next, um, we've got one that's going to be a skincare company that we're launching and I wish I could tell you guys more cause I'm, I'm super pumped about it, but, uh, but, yeah. but, but you're year. not going to tell us is what, well, you're no, I, I don't want to be one of those guys. Oh, I got something super, super cool. Super I cool can't company. tell you that. <laughs> no, but it would just, it would get, it would get stolen so fast cause it's just so new. But, but like if you follow Brandiac and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, absolutely keep in the loop. Okay. Well, how about we make you a deal? If you tell us, we'll let you leave this hotel room. I'll lie. <laughs> Dude, okay. So let, um, take us back a little bit, man. Um, how did you get into entrepreneurship? I mean, you're only 21. I mean, I mean, we're in our 20s as well, but you're like the youngest of the 20s. You know, you're 21. All right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, wh- why why entrepreneurship, dude? Why didn't you do what most people do? Uh, go to college, get an education. Maybe you did. Maybe you already are on that path. Um, why did you choose entrepreneurship? Oh yeah. So this goes way back to like you know elementary school. I was one of those kids, you know, like flipping stuff and always always getting into something. So it was like for me, it was just something I just kind of did. So like. Me and my buddy had this company. Well, like company, <laughs> we had this <laughs> in elementary we had this school. Company in fifth grade, it was, it was doing about mm, six figures a month. But <laughs> no, no, no. So, so we uh, we would make these tie dye pencils out of like this goo stuff, and then we would actually the way that we kind of brought it to market in our grade was we would actually like pretty much etch it someone's name into it and give it to them on their birthday to mm. cr- you know to generate demand. So oh that, my god! So that when like people saw it, they're like, dang, that's so cool. How can I get one of those? And so then, so then we had to just like kind of keep making them and selling them. So then that was like a thing. And then like the teachers all shut it down, which wasn't cool. But, but no, like, <laughs> <laughs> it, I just been doing it. Like I don't know, it's just one of those things where like, I would be sitting there and like, oh, I think there's money in that. Like even at a really young age, like it's kind of a weird thought. So they, they shut you down from your first business. They made you close it, close the doors. The man came in and said, nope can't do this and then you gave up and why didn't you just give up from there <laughs> obviously you didn't obviously you started another business but was that you know demoralizing were you like fuck this sucks this yeah entrepreneurship. if you're watching no <laughs> 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 yeah i mean it was like what and my parents are always, they, they're so supportive that they were like that's that sucks man why why would they shut that down you're a kid like you're you're in fifth grade like sell a friend to, it's you're not even forcing them to do anything right, so yeah. yeah i was just like I kind of shook it off. I was like, ah, they don't know what's up. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's actually kind of what got us into, or got me into, um, 
into doing like eBay and stuff like that too was like, oh, well, I don't have to sell everybody at school. I, there's millions of people online. So mm-hmm. that was kind of probably the another, other turn that was actually good. So yeah. yeah. So that forced you into finding a different marketplace. You, you found out this marketplace isn't going to work. So we're going to find somewhere else to sell my product. Yeah, exactly. Very exactly. Cool. So yeah, that was, that was the thing. So like I continued selling crap at school, right? Like I was doing like lanyards and stuff. And one day that's actually I discovered Amazon. I threw some up and then I checked the next morning and it hadn't sold anything. Next day, forgot about them. Then sold another day, and then like the next week, I go in there and there's like twelve orders for like ten dollars each. I was like, one hundred twenty bucks. That's cool. So, so yeah, I just kind of kept doing that whole thing, and that's what got into like the whole Amazon thing. So it's like this long progression of things. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Uh, are your parents uh, entrepreneurs, um, or do they work for corporate America and they love it, and that's just not the life you wanted to live? What, what's what's the deal? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so no, both my parents are in corporate America. Mm-hmm. My dad, my dad's, um, he works at FedEx, like, and so he's kind of in like that whole that whole world. Um, my mom's a nurse, so I guess it's not really it's kind of corporate, but but no. And the thing is too is we have, we've always had a really comfortable lifestyle, so I'm, I'm, I can't say I've ever like you know come up from like we had it so bad that I needed it, you know. That and that's a lot of people's stories. So like for me, that's, I find that actually really interesting because I'm not really even sure what what you know got it in my in my blood to do it. Um, the other side of my family, like my dad's side is very entrepreneurial, but my dad wasn't right. So, um, my, I guess my second cousin, he founded fuel backpack, um, which is a really, you know, it's a pretty big brand. They're like, they're all over. I mean, they're in like Walmart your, target. Your second cousin founded fuel backpack. Yeah. Yeah. The whole bag line. Wow. Oh, wow. And that whole side too. They own, they own hotels and stuff. It's so like, I think I got a lot of that gene and like my grandma, she owned like a huge accounting business where like, I don't know, it was like. 900 ca- uh, like people in like the town of you know in the small town of Montana so it's like I don't know I, I think it it's, comes from that side but mm-hmm. like it's never been out of like this need of like I need to get out of you know get out of this or or be like my parents or anything like that so yeah I don't know I never really thought about it that much yeah well, that, that that's interesting um who was the most influential <clears throat> person in your life uh growing up that inspired you uh, to get into entrepreneurship uh, it, was it a celebrity? Was it somebody like you know Mark Cuban, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, or yeah. So there's this guy Ryan Daniel Moran, and he he does Amazon businesses. So I got I got I started listening to him in 2014. He was running this podcast called Freedom Fast Lane, and I would listen. I would I would go in my basement. I would turn it on and like my speaker and just like pack my orders that I was that was shipping out that day, and change. And I still listen to him. He runs a he runs a, mm. a website now called Capitalism.com. So plug for Ryan. I'd, I'm going to try to try to go. He's got events and stuff too, but yeah, that's kind of who got me like really thinking. Cause he's, if you guys haven't checked him out, he's, he's really great. Like as far as like the long-term thinking and he's, he's a big Gary Vee guy too. So yeah. yeah. Uh, do you read any, uh, I'm trying to understand them um, because many people who want to be entrepreneurs, uh, it's just, I don't think it's intentional, right? Um, they just have this drive, this fire, this thing inside of them that just wants more, right? Um, so there's no book you can buy on entrepreneurship that tells you every day wake up and do this, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. If you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> think this. If you want to start this business, think this. You know, I mean, everybody does it differently, right? Um, so, like, what does your day to day look like in your uh, endeavors of being an entrepreneur? Yeah, that's so funny you're asking this because I, I was talking about this to someone too lately because it's like there isn't a book. You gotta right. like you gotta like think of this stuff and like, <laughs> and like plan and there's like trajectories and things. So it's like it's weird. Um, but so my day right now, I, I joined uh, I joined Orange Theory. So I wake up every day and, and do that. I'm doing about six days a week because I gotta get out and get some exercise. Otherwise, I just sit stagnant the whole morning. Yeah. I don't get a lot done. Mm-hmm. So that's my first thing is I gotta get up. I gotta get I got the energy going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I come back and that's like kind of my time to really like. Typically, I take like an hour after that, after I'm like ready to work, and I like kind of plan out the day. Like, at the end of today, what do I want to be accomplished? Like, reverse engineering the whole thing of like, okay, we've got six clients that need this, and we're all in this step, and people are asking for this, so maybe we need like a new process made. So, it's like, that's kind of like the, the whole thing. And so, then I'll start on that before morning, and then after lunch, man, it's just all the like the, the really tedious stuff because that's like a little less creative and you're just like, I'm just kicking it out through a sauna and just like busting out tasks um, till about like four. And that, that time for me is like, I'm just like in zone mode. I do, um, I listen to binaural beats. 
just like the things that like it sounds like a washer machine or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you're just like zoning and you're just you're just crushing, man. And so that's like that's like what I've been doing lately. Um, oh, very cool. Yeah. It, and so then yeah, it's been then by like I'm usually I usually eat moth by like six. I try to keep like a I, I keep like a nine to six typically. Um, and sometimes in the evenings, like I've got extra work, but like, I, I, I like that structure. It's funny enough. Cause it's like, you know, most people like entrepreneurs, like work like 14 hours a day and I don't have to work for anybody, but I, I like that. I like that structure. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That that's quite the opposite of, of what we do where we find ourselves most nights working till one, <laughs> two <laughs> in yeah. the morning and, you know, waking up early and, and it's just different, you know, I mean, I like his structure more though. I should learn some. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds real good. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's probably, there's probably a better way to do it, but like, it's a long-term, uh, it's a long-term thing though. Yeah. You know, it's like, if you can put the systems in place and like, have people report back what they need to report back and I don't know maybe I need to be working more hours I don't know if you're getting everything yeah. done and crushing it I mean I don't I, you got to do what works for you yeah yeah yeah, yeah I suppose yeah, yeah I, I heard um uh one of my uh, one of the friends I just made at this conference I was uh watching uh his uh fa- Facebook post and it was he asked Gary V what's the most important question um what's the best advice you could just give to an entrepreneur and Gary Vee said know yourself right um and and I think it's awesome that you've prioritized um the schedule that you have um because I think it fits who you are and what you want to do and how you want to live every day and uh so that's really awesome that you know you speak truth to even what Gary had said (laughs) so that's incredible um so dude uh real quick what's the biggest uh mistake you've made thus far in uh your journey I mean because there's a lot Mm -hmm. um I would say just like I mentioned earlier like undervaluing yourself Mm -hmm. and undervaluing like what you're doing because otherwise it's gonna be really hard to like ever do because we've all got these long visions right like like where you want to be if you don't value what you're doing, it's going to be really hard to actually get to like the next thing. So I would say like, it took me so long to actually like get that figured out. And then it's kind of rolling a little more now. And not, not, not that I can say until I got it all figured out, but like that, that's been my biggest mistake is like mm. just kind of thinking that it was all kind of willy nilly mm-hmm. for a bit. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, once you figure that out, I think it's, it's nice. Cause then you know what you're up to. Yeah. And, and what has been the greatest lesson you've learned as a result of that then? You know, just to stay focused on the next thing, you know, cause you can't, you can't, you also can't like do it all at once. And that's like what I was saying about like my hours and stuff is like the lesson that I'll take away is like, okay, well we're just gonna, we're just gonna do this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we're going to, we're going to value what we do and we're going to just try to crush it as much for our clients as if we're like our very own project. And Yeah. So, um, college versus entrepreneurship. Now, it'd be great if it just coexisted together, right? If just if college would actually just foster an environment and a uh, you know a place where people could actually bring out their skills and talents and um, be an entrepreneur while getting a college education, but that college sometimes is so old school in what they teach you know even high school and whatnot so if you had to pick one over the other which one would it be well like you said it's totally who you are right Mm -hmm. like like the thing is always it doesn't have to be like it is right now with like you read this book and then you recite this answer like because it's never like that at the real when have you ever had a client (laughs) and they're like here's our pamphlet recite this to me on a test like like no what be like, <laughs> hold on let me go back to the book i think yeah, i read was, this in my <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're like great work like you've passed like here's, here's you're hired here's a thousand right. hundred thousand a year to manage us like no no it doesn't work that way so it's like no they could restructure it and i think it's just like this crazy there it's crazy different worlds so if you're really like killing it at school i've heard of entrepreneurs that do well like in the entrepreneur world but like It's kind of just like a different mindset. So like, if you want to be the nine to five and like, seriously, like thank Jesus for those people that want to go down that route. It's not for me. It's not for you guys probably. But if you're, if you want to like have that stable life, because entrepreneurship is really hard and it's not for everyone. So, so the people, I guess, is that, is that what you're kind of asking? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't do both. 
and usually the mind just doesn't work on both so it's like for the people that do want to go to school it's like this kind of this other kind of person that likes different things they like stability and they like low risk situations where they can like stay in a job for a long time but then entrepreneurs are like i'm dying like i need i need this other coin where it's like I might not have a business in three months, like I need to, but I could also be like doing some really great stuff. So it's like, it's such a high risk thing. So that's the other thing is like, you're not just going to go out there and be successful in entrepreneurship, but there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be like kind of in the middle after you graduate school and you're going to like work your way up and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Ryan Dice, uh, you know, his story is he actually uh, started building his business while going to school and college, working a full time job and on the side, he had his side hustle, which now today, you know, he's built quite the company, um, highly successful individual. So, I mean, in my opinion, that would have been like the way to do it if somebody, you know, values college and um, wants to go down the path of entrepreneurship. But most people don't do that. Um, so, yeah. d- did you go to college, Reese? I did. I did. S- and how was that? Did you go the full four years and get your degree? did not you did not so you <laughs> went to college you but you did not did graduate not. you are a failure you I'm did not failure. graduate how, how long did you make it i made it one year well one. yeah one year and what were you going for i was going for marketing yeah. going for marketing you're in marketing so why did you say fuck it i'm dropping out <laughs> uh, oh actually there's a really good reason for this so there's this company that that uh that actually like kind of interns people into startups mm-hmm. turned out to be kind of a weird deal um so it didn't really work out for me because I went and worked at a startup like it would have been my sophomore year of college. Mm-hmm. Went out to Virginia and did like a year at this tech startup. Well, it's kind of a packaging startup. But I learned a ton in that year I was there. It was like really long hours and things. And mm-hmm. we were doing um, doing a lot of accounts and stuff. So, so that's kind of what got me out of college, actually, was like having another thing. It's like, hey, mom and dad, will you support me in this? And like so so they they helped me like get in this program because it was kind of expensive, but it was like college tuition right so but they, what they did is actually plugged you into like a real world situation so gotcha gotcha so you felt there was more value learning in the real world than value from the college yeah that you're going to yeah so i played baseball and uh i played at juco paradise valley uh cc in, in phoenix arizona okay and dude everybody on the team just knew me as like that dude that just did entrepreneurial stuff because i i didn't at that point like doing baseball that many hours i was like obsessed with just like ideas i was just like go up to someone mm. and be like what do you think about this idea of like this thing or that and they'd be like oh that's so cool or like you know so i was not i was on a baseball team but i wasn't a baseball player i was obviously an entrepreneur <laughs> <laughs> and so and so that was like this horrible disconnect for me and so i actually quit ball like with like two months left because there's so many players and everybody wanted playing time and i was like you guys you guys should just have it man i'm not gonna go to the league we actually have a guy that just got picked up on my team that that ended up going to the league no so kidding like, you can do it Right. But that's not like everyone was like obsessed with that. And I'm like, that's not, I want to go this completely different route. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's kind of my college story, but mm. it's very cool that you were able to realize that, that you didn't just get sucked into all oh, baseball is this awesome thing. And I'm going to go big leagues, make a ton of money there. No, you saw your vision clearly was not there, even though, cause you were good at that. You saw, thought you could be better at something else and wanted to pursue that. It's exactly. very cool. Exactly. exactly. That, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mo- most people don't know. Uh, realize that you know so um they they milk it for too long and waste many years you know where they could have been pursuing what they're actually uh gonna be successful at one day so kudos to you um so if people want to connect with you um reach and they want to reach out to you to do business with you or just learn more about you um perhaps just tell you hey uh, thank you so much for sharing your story you know i'm i was there one day or i'm currently uh, a struggling entrepreneur. Your story really inspired me. How can they get a hold of you? How th- how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, so I'm I'm big on Instagram. I actually don't post that much, but I, I check a lot. So um, if you want to shoot me a DM at uh, at Reese underscore Queen, or uh, or follow us at Brand Yak, and that's Brand underscore Yak, um, and we'll get in touch. And like, yeah. So if if anybody has any thoughts or anything, let me know. Absolutely, Reese. It's been awesome having you on here. Um, you said this was your first, podca- first podcast, and let me tell you, you did absolutely terrible. Just I awful. was thinking that. Like, <laughs> everybody knows. <laughs> Dude, it was no, 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 no. You're a natural. You did an awesome job. It was great having you on here, man. Thank you so much for making the time. We appreciate it. Yo, thank you so much. You guys, first of all, these people, for anybody, are amazing. Like, I, I just walked into this conference, and they, like the energy is insane. So I love it, you guys. This, this is cool.